What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be introducing my new 2009 Subaru Impreza all-wheel drive wagon. Now I'm very excited today because as many of you may know, I'm a huge fan of wagons. I did own a 1991 Honda Civic RT 4-wheel drive wagon. That was an awesome car and it was super fun to drive. So I'm very excited to hop back into another wagon. A coworker of mine was getting rid of this car and I asked him what was wrong with it and what why he was getting rid of it and he basically told me the car's been sitting for about a year, it does need some work. He was unsure of what the exact issues were but the car basically um, kind of died on him. A lot of smoke, a lot of lo a loud noise, wasn't sure if it was the engine but he didn't want to dump any more money into it so the car's been sitting in his driveway for about a year and uh, once he told me he was getting rid of it I kind of hopped on the deal because the winters up in Pennsylvania are a lot different and a lot more fierce than the winters in Brooklyn so I commute to work every day and I needed something that was going to be good in the winter and just wanted to basically upgrade overall to something a little more modern and a little newer so I had the car towed to my house and uh, I just wanted to start by giving it a little a little bit of a quick clean before I brought it into the garage because she was sitting for quite some time and she had a lot of leaves and dust on her and all that and I just wanted a clean slate to work on. As many of you know, Subarus are really good cars. They're really reliable and this is my first Subaru so I was super excited to kind of jump into it and see what was up with it. The body style was really nice and I was always into these uh, hatchbacks because they, they have a really nice sporty look to them. So I'm very excited overall to be jumping into this project and I hope you guys are excited to see some new content other than a Honda. I know it's probably a shocker. Yes, it's not a Honda, but this is going to be my new daily and we're going to get her 100% before we can get her on the road. So gave her a quick wash and now I'm going to just have to make some room in the garage and move the toys around. So once I got all the cars outside, except for my teal CRX, it was time to move everything out of this corner because my plan was I was going to move my Tahitian green CRX into that far right corner just because I hadn't had time to work on it. It had no motor and it, since this car wasn't really going to be moving for a while, I figured why not just put it in this corner since I'm going to be needing space for the Subaru. So. My main goal, since my garage is kind of in a disarray right now, is just to get everything kind of off this one side of the garage. That way I had some workspace. I was gonna back in the Subaru to the left corner. That way if, if it needed some serious work, I would have the room and space around me just to you know, work a little comfortable. Once I, once I got everything out of this corner, it was pretty much one, two, three to, to back the CRX in. I jacked up the car and with the help of my father-in-law, we were able to maneuver it with just moving some things around to get it into a good spot. Once we got the car in the corner, we just supported it on jack stands and it was time to bring in the Subaru. Now, if you guys have never pushed a car or a Subaru, they're heavy as hell. I wasn't used to it because I'm so used to pushing Hondas, they're so light that this car actually had some weight to it. We threw it up in neutral and thank God that the brakes weren't seized up so she was able to roll pretty good. And once we got it into the back corner, that was it. We were pretty much set.
So I got the car on jack stands, and the first problem I noticed with the Subaru is the hood cable did not want to release from the hood latch. So after messing with it for about five minutes, I was actually finally able to release the lock. The one thing I did notice is that the hood latch was very corroded and somewhat in a stuck position. When I tried to reclose it, it did not want to lock properly. So I ended up using some WD-40, greased it up, and was able to lock the hood from slamming it. Now I'm not a big fan of slamming hoods, it just doesn't feel right to me, but this will have to do temporarily until I can sort out a new lock and possibly get a new hood release cable as well. So before I take you under the hood and into the engine bay, I'm going to show you a little bit of the car's interior. It has your basic black on black cloth seats with plastic paneling. Now the interior was pretty dirty because the car has been sitting for over a year so you can imagine how much attention it did need. There was a bit of mold that I had to tackle so I ended up taking the seats out which allowed me to fully shampoo the carpets which it desperately needed. I did give all the plastic paneling a quick thorough disinfectant wipe down and the back seats were in such good shape that it didn't even look like people sat back there since the car had been purchased. Overall, I was very excited about how the interior came out. It's pretty much smells like a new car inside. And I'm kind of OCD about when it comes to a clean interior just because it's my preference. I know the car needs more attention than cleaning at this moment, but this was a good start for me and it just got me on the right track. Okay guys, now we are going to get into the engine bay. So this is a 2.5 liter four cylinder motor. And many of you might know, and to some of you who don't know, these cars are plagued by bad head gaskets. And I wanna show you why I believe that this car does have a bad head gasket, just from basic leaks and fluid checks. Now the power steering fluid seems pretty good. It didn't cause any issues for concern. But when I checked the oil, I noticed the oil was kind of milky and low. So that made me instantly check the antifreeze and when I popped that cap off the radiator I noticed that it almost had nothing in it. So it kind of led me to believe that oil and antifreeze were escaping somewhere or possibly mixing inside the motor which is caused by bad head gaskets. I noticed a few leaks coming from the valve covers and a small leak coming near the timing cover. So I wanted to pop off this little air duct piece just to get a better view of the drive belts and anything else I couldn't see from up top. At first glance, I knew that the intake filter was gonna be very dirty, so I knew that needed to be changed. And one of the other things I noticed was the clips were broken on the intake, so that definitely needed to be replaced. Some of the intake piping had also been unplugged, maybe from previous work that had been done on the car. And also the battery and tie downs needed to be cleaned up as well as the terminals. One of the bigger issues that I noticed with this car was is that the O2 sensor, when I followed the wire down, I noticed that the O2 sensor was not connected to the exhaust. It had looked like someone might have previously worked on it and tried to remove it and ended up breaking the O2 sensor off. If you look closely, you can see that in the light, there's a piece sticking out of the exhaust, which is the rest of the O2 sensor. Now this would cause a loud noise when you start the car so I'm guessing this is what he was talking about when he heard a lot of noise coming from the engine bay so that's one of the things that's definitely going to be need needing to be replaced the tires on the other hand were in actually really good shape the tires he said were pretty much two two months old and he didn't put barely any miles on them so that was kind of a cool thing to know that I don't need tires once we moved underneath I could kind of confirm that the engine did have a bad head gasket, and I'm gonna say this with confidence, these are the exact symptoms that plague Subarus. If you look closely, a lot of these areas underneath the car, near the engine cradle are wet, and when you follow the exhaust manifold up to where the head, where it connects to the heads, you can see that there was a lot of oil dripping from the head gasket area. Now to me, from seeing this in, in previous issues with Subarus, I just felt confident in saying that the head gaskets did need to be replaced. I'm going to end up pulling the motor and doing all the seals and valve cover gaskets as well. Just to be confident that a lot of this has been done. I want to redo the timing belt, water pump, get all that out of the way. 
and just basically get this car into tip top shape before I start driving it. If you look on this side, you can really see where the oil is leaking near the other side of the head gasket. So it kind of just basically confirms my idea of the head gasket being an issue. But overall, I think this is going to be a good project and a good daily once everything is sorted out. I'm very excited to start on it and just basically get into something new. I really appreciate you guys viewing the channel and checking out the video. And I will see you on the next one where we're going to be pulling out the Subaru motor. Take care and have a good one.